trilobites, brachiopods, ferns, and mastodons. I'm Rick Sowash. Brought my trowel. We're going fossil hunting on Ohio rocks. You're in Ohio, right? 500 miles from the nearest seashore. And you find a rock filled with seashells? What? Have you seen these massive mammal skeletons they got in museums all gigrotus and humongoloid? Or little teeny tiny itsy bitsy trilobites? Hey, in Ohio, you want fossils? We got fossils. Fossils are the remains of organisms or traces of organisms that lived in the geologic past and are buried within the Earth's crust. We typically tend to think of fossils as bones or shells, and oftentimes you think of dinosaurs as an example. They can also be the traces of animals, so they're not the actual body, but the remnants of their behavior, much like dinosaur footprints. The rocks in Ohio are a very diverse age, which means that we can find a lot of different kinds of fossils in Ohio. The rocks that we have here are from about 450 to about 250 million years across Ohio. And that means we can find, most commonly in the southern part of the state, marine invertebrate fossils, things like brachiopods, trilobites, clams, snails, and so forth. But as we get to the outer parts of the state, particularly up in Cleveland area, Toledo and so forth, we can find early fish and early sharks and early amphibians. And of course, we also have a period of deposition in this region known as the Pleistocene or the Ice Age for the last two million years where we can find evidence of Pleistocene or megafauna animals such as mastodon and mammoths and sloths and bison. You can find fossils in almost any road cut or stream bed here in Ohio. They're not dinosaurs but they're from much older animals, a lot of sea creatures and such. We don't find any dinosaur fossils in Ohio. They probably lived here because dinosaurs were land animals and Ohio was a land area at the time they were alive. But Ohio was an upland, a high area, so any rain that fell would carry the sand and the bones away. We can learn a lot about past environments from the fossils. They tell us whether it was an ocean or a land, if it was cold or warm, high altitude or low. For instance, if you go and find in your backyard clams and brachiopods and trilobites like you might find in southwestern Ohio, you would see that this was a marine environment. These are the kinds of animals that live in the ocean today. My favorite type of fossils are trilobites. They are extinct arthropods, somewhat related to horseshoe crabs if you had to pick an animal that was alive today. Of course, they went extinct 250 million years ago. Not everything you find as a fossil you're going to find is a living animal today. That's because some of the animals are extinct, which just means they're all dead. Over 99% of all life that's ever lived on Earth has gone extinct. Extinction is a natural process. It's part of ending the lifespan of a species which tends to be about two million years in duration in the fossil record. So as environments change and organisms fail to adapt to those environments, species will tend to go extinct. Although that sounds like bad news, the best part is that these extinct animals have left their descendants around for us today. And these descendants are the plants and animals that we know that make up our modern ecosystems. I know what you're thinking, oh right, fossils in my neighborhood? And even if there were fossils in my neighborhood, where am I going to find a bulldozer to dig them up? Hello? You don't need a bulldozer to find fossils. In fact, it's way easy to find fossils in Ohio. Well, we're lucky in Ohio. We can find fossils in a lot of great places. The first place you might want to look is your local creek. Creek beds are great places because the running water exposes the rock that contains fossils in them. And you can go in, provided it's very safe, and you have permission, and you can go and collect fossils in those beds. Ohio is so packed with fossils that it's a wonderful place to hunt fossils, particularly in southwestern Ordovician Ohio, in the Cincinnati area. The Ordovician rocks that are exposed in that area have attracted people from all over the world to study the fossils. The fossils roll out of the hillsides and out of the creeks. We do have great parks where we can collect fossils. A couple of examples would be the Trammell Fossil Park, just north of Cincinnati, Caesars Creek Spillway Fossil Park, as well as the Hanson Fossil Site in northern Ohio. Hanson Fossil Park is a community of Devonian-aged fossils. It's just rich in its diversity, as well as in the number of fossils that you can find various types of preservation. Caesars Creek Spillway is a great place to collect fossils. The types of fossils you might expect to find there would be those of marine life, 
fossils such as clams and snails, cephalopods, as well as trilobites. There's plenty to see and plenty to pick up, provided that you have permission from the state park to go collecting first. Tremble Fossil Park is also a great place to look for fossils. It's just north of the city of Cincinnati, and once again, you can expect to find bryozoans, clams, snails, trilobites, crinoids, all remnants of what used to be a very diverse marine community. Both Cedars Creek Spillway and Trammell Fossil Park are designed to have the rocks exposed at the surface for easy access. You can see the layers of the strata exposed. You can walk amongst these layers, and they're both very safe and friendly places to collect fossils. Out of the way of traffic, where you can spend a lot of time on the ground, nosing around for treasures. Most places in Ohio where you collect fossils just like you to surface collect. That is, pick up what's off of the ground without digging any major holes. So what you need is good eyesight, some time, some enthusiasm, and a bag to put all your goodies in. Corals? Cool. But what if you found something really big, really gigrotus, something truly humongoloid? How would you even know what it was? How would you dig it up? All right, it could be a huge job, I admit, especially if you're trying to unearth a mastodon. We're digging a mastodon, a prehistoric elephant that lived here in Ohio about 13,000 years ago during the Ice Age. The mastodon skeleton was found by a farmer who was plowing in the little town of Rossburg, way at the western edge of the state. One of my jobs at the Geology Museum is identifying things that people find. I identify rocks, minerals, bones, and fossils. In December of 2002, a farmer called me and said, I've got some dinosaur bones in my field. And I said, well, sir, probably not, but why don't you bring in something to show me? And I thought he'd bring in a cow bone or a horse bone. Instead, he brought me in two mastodon teeth. My jaw just about hit the ground. I was so surprised because I thought he'd bring in some cow bones or horse bones. And here to bring in some real prehistoric animal bones, which is pretty exciting. And we've been digging for three years and have about three quarters of the skeleton so far. We have not found the skull. We have found four teeth, but no skull yet and no tusks. I don't think we're going to find the skull because I think that was destroyed by the plows. Well, we've learned from this mastodon that it was a very healthy adult mastodon. It wasn't old, but it wasn't real young. We know that because of the wear on the teeth. We have no idea how it died. It might have died from natural causes, maybe a predator got it, or even possibly humans might have killed it, but we haven't found any evidence of that yet. Mastodons are not alive today because they became extinct about 10,000 years ago, and no one really knows why. They don't know if it was a climate that killed them off or if people did them in. To find the bones, we just have to dig, just move a lot of dirt. First, we take off the dirt that's on top, and for that we use things like shovels and trowels. Then we coat the bones with a layer of, of wet paper and then put strips of burlap in plaster of Paris and coat the bones. It's sort of like making a cast of a broken arm or a broken leg. Then once that hardens or dries, we chip out One, the dirt from underneath two, and turn three. it over, and then we're able to take it back to the laboratory. Once hey, we take good. the bones out of the dig, we transport them back to the museum that I work at, at Ohio State University, where volunteers are slowly cleaning and gluing the broken bones back together. None of the tools we use are anything special, nothing that you can't get at a normal hardware store. The white paper we're putting on the bones is just toilet paper that we dip in water or wet with paintbrushes. The people that are helping me dig are all volunteers. Most of them have had no experience digging, but I'm running the dig as an educational dig, showing people how to dig, how to identify bones, how to map them, and that. So most of my people have had no experience before, but they really enjoy it. My favorite part about digging is uncovering a bone that hasn't seen the sunlight in maybe 9,000 years or for dinosaurs, maybe 150 million years. It's a lot of hard work to dig for bones, but it's a lot of fun too. Mastodons are cool. Any prehistoric animal is cool. A mastodon in your backyard? It's not impossible, which means it's possible. So get up, you couch potato, and start exploring. I'm Rick Sowash. You might as well get used to it. You're gonna see me next time on Ohio Rocks.